So Cinderella has many different dance styles. It has a little bit of Fred and Ginger, 1930s, 1940s, which predominantly this Cinderella's and the pilots. They do a, an amazing duet in Act Two, The Wolves, which is very much based on Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And then there's also all the swing styles from the 1930s and 40s. There's Lindy Hop, a bit of jive, um, anything that was popular from that time. There were a lot of social dances during that, that era. And so we've tried to pull lots of those influences and styles into the piece. There's also some beautiful contemporary dance as well during the, the waltz in Act Two that while the Cinderella and Pilot are doing sort of quite Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movement, everybody else is doing quite um, circular, swingy movement that um, goes with that waltz music very nicely. Um, and then there's also a lot of uh, gestural type movement to music in order to do quite a lot of storytelling that happens in Act 1 and also in uh, Act 3. So there's lots of different styles and basically with Matthew's work what he tries to do is he tries to um, tell the story using movement and will use any kind of movement he can in order to tell the story. So that's why it's often varied in each piece but, it's, but, but this piece is very much set within the the late 1930s, early 40s, and the kind of dance styles that were happening during that time. So in Act 1 of Cinderella, there's a section called the blackout section, um, and it's when uh, the angel has pushed Cinderella out into the street, and she's got her suitcase, and she can't see anything. It's completely black, because obviously, during the Blitz, there were loads of blackouts, she couldn't see anything. And um, she goes on a bit of a journey. So first of all, she sees torch wardens who are quite scary to her because she's, she, all she can see is flashlight. She doesn't know who they are. Um, and she's trying to find the pilot. She finds the pilot and then loses him. And, she, and eventually she ends up sort of face to face with all these people that have got gas masks on. And the idea behind that was, it was to do with being scared in the street, not being able to see anything, and your imagination taking over. And um, even though in World War II nobody wore gas masks, everybody used to carry them around, but it seemed like a really scary image for somebody like Cinderella to come across. So it's like she's imagining the worst. And the idea of a, a gas mask, and it does kind of look a little bit like a dog, and so that's how that, sort of, that image for us sort of married the, the, the idea of being fearful, imagining the worst, and then having somebody with a gas mask on, which looks like a dog. So that's where the movement came from as well, the, the idea of, you know, a, a pack of dogs who are after her. And, she, and, it, and it's because she can't see, really, she, she doesn't know what she's looking at, so she just senses danger. So that's where that section kind of comes from. In the last section of Act One, we've got... Uh, that section is called Emin and Bombers. And it's when the angel says, you will go to the ball, you will end up going to the Café de Paris, um, and giving her an invite. And it's when fantasy takes over for Cinderella and she uh, is flying through the air basically with the angel and so we had to come up with some ideas about how the airmen and bombers would move and as usual we did lots of amazing creative tasks originally this is when it was first done so uh, we spent a lot of time uh, Matthew giving us tasks saying, right, I want you to come up with eight counts of flying. And you go, right, okay, eight counts of flying. So you'd have to come up with different, um, different movements that would simulate that. Uh, and then he'd give each group of people a slightly different task. And then we'd all come up with material and then we'd put it into a long phrase. 
so that some people would be uh, piloting planes. There's a brilliant bit where somebody's got a steering wheel and they pull it back and in M and bombers you see that a lot, that, that particular uh, movement. Um, blades of a plane, uh, there's quite a lot of turning that way, there's a helicopter movement. So basically it's each dancer coming up with a, a sequence of uh, movements which are then put together and then after that more detail gets layered on but that's basically where those movements came from originally. In a lot of Matthew's work there's a lot of social dances and we tend to because social, everybody social dances, in, uh, everybody does. In every walk of life, you're at a wedding, you dance, you know, you go out clubbing, you dance, and you dance together. So in terms of telling real stories, there's always going to be a moment at some point or another where you're going to do some sort of social dance. And historically what we've always done is we've come up with different, you know, phrases of like for, the, for example Cinderella, different phrases of jive to jive music and then we do that sort of really strange thing of then trying to put it onto a bit of Prokofiev or Tchaikovsky or whatever the particular ballet is and at first it always feels really awkward um, but then suddenly it becomes second nature and you can't imagine it being anything else than what we've choreographed. Um, so we tend to again work creatively, everybody gets a task, you're going to come up with a little bit of jive, you're going to do a little bit of jitterbug, a um, bit of swing, everybody comes up with a phrase, we put it together with like swing dance music or something that's from that era, get the phrase together and then go right now it's got to go on this. And then we work, and it's like moulding a bit of clay. You work the music and the movement together, and eventually you end up, you know, with a nice pot. Um, and yeah, there's always a funny moment halfway through. You think, oh no, this feels really weird. But then it just feels so natural. Um, and we do that a lot. In, in most of the shows, there'll be some element of that at some point. For Cinderella, because it's set in World War II, it's very important that everybody in the cast does some research about World War II. Um, because a lot, of, a lot of the people who are in the company maybe have got grandparents who were in World War II, but probably not. Um, and so very far removed from that period of time. Um, and so it's important to do research in order to understand what life was like during, during that time. And so what Matthew likes to do is he, he likes people to, to, to sit down and, and think about what their characters are firstly, but also to, to delve into different subjects about World War II, like rationing, um, air raid wardens, the blackout, the blitz, um, you know, the, the, the slightly uh, subversive side of, of London during that time. There were lots of prostitutes and rent boys and things like that. Um, what it was like to, to be a soldier, what it was like to be in the Navy or, or in the RAF, so that everybody gets a chance to, to research different sections and so, and then we all come together and we sit down and we talk about each thing that people have learned. And I think that's really important because it means you're connecting with the period of time that you're um, portraying. Because if you don't know what story you're telling and what time it was it's set, then really you can't give it any depth. And we always like everybody to feel like their characters have a lot of depth and there's a richness in what they do. Um, and also it's quite good fun especially if you know nothing about it um, and it's good to hear people's experiences like some people do have grandparents who've got stories about you know what happened to them during the war um, my dad was in the in world war ii so i've got some good stories so it's good to hear them and, and hear you know people's relatives actually this actually happened to them and i think it is we do that with every piece. We always make sure we do lots and lots of research so that we really know what the era is, 
what our characters were like, what life was like. Um, and I think you, you notice in each show that, that that work really does make a difference in terms of characterisation and storytelling. So we have a cast that's made up of lots of varied experience. So we have some members of the company that were in the production last time, but we also have one company, two company members who are in the very original production. One is Michaela Miazza and the other one's Alan Vincent. Um, and Michaela played one of the ensemble roles initially and then were, was the stepmother in the last production and is now playing the stepmother again. Alan was part of the ensemble in the original cast and is now playing the father. So that's amazing. And then we have some people, there is about five or six that were in the production last time and they are playing more or less the same roles but Kate Lyons for example is being a swing this time round which makes that much easier for us because she knows the show very well so she can just go in and do it and then we have some absolute newbies and for them it's a baptism by fire because they have to learn two roles and um, sometimes three um, and they have to just go from one one part to the next very very quickly so some of them get a bit frazzled in the brain and others of them can really cope with that very very well so my job is to try and measure how everybody's doing in the room whether or not they're taking on the material if they've lost their focus or their concentration so it is challenging but then we have a lot of the older cast members as well can can be offering support and advice and little pearls of wisdom to do with the show like if you go off here it's much easier to then come on from that wing etc etc so there's often a lot of handing over of information and um, wisdom from the older members of the cast which is really handy and also in terms of a way of working within the company we do class every day there's a way of working and a way of being in the room which the older members of the company pass down which is very very useful for for me because i don't have enough time to do that i'm just trying to get the show on so it has its challenges but it's also really lovely as well because at the end of a tour you realize that all those newer members have have really learned a great deal and a lot of information and knowledge has been passed on. So during the rehearsal period, we work with three casts. Uh, and at the moment, our casts are called Jitterbug, Lindy Hop and Shag, which are all different dance styles, swing dance styles from the 1930s and 40s. And each person more or less learns two parts. So they're usually in two of the three casts. So they're learning their different roles. And so what my job is to make sure that everybody gets a chance at doing each one of their parts in the three casts that we have. Um, and on tour what happens is, is that somebody who's, who's learnt two parts will do four performances of one of their parts, two performances of another one of their parts and then they have, hopefully have two shows off if there aren't injuries. So we have a rotational casting. The way to keep the standard going is that we have to constantly rehearse. So what we do is if there seems to be a problem, our resident director Neil Westmoreland will be watching the show and if there seems to be something going wrong or there's some spacing that's not right, everybody then goes back to their rehearsal casts we rehearse and then we make sure that we've sorted out the problem and then we go back to our normal performance casts.